scalene triangle. Is that? Why, are you, why, why are you lying? Now, the reason I want it to not be a tri right triangle is I don't want to do right triangle trigonometry, basically, to the entire picture. Um, so let's label this. This is vertex A, this is vertex B, this is vertex C. Um, the general way of labeling the sides is the small letter of the opposite angle. So since this side is angle A, or vertex A, this side gets labeled as little a. I have a question. Go for it. Why is signs spelled S-I-N-E-S? Isn't sign just well, S-I-N? Plural. Signs. So well, you signs. just have an S after you for signs? Plural. Uh, no rhyme. It's like you don't say there's one cow and another cow. You say there are two cows. Yeah, it's called. Blue but it's spelled C-O-W-S. Sign is spelled S-I-N-E. But then why is there a problem with S-I-N? Shut up. <laughs> it's plural, for God's sake. I'm deleting this entire... As I say, I'm going to put this on line. This is Ryan, who doesn't understand why there's an S for plural. Circle with line through it. You don't spell out theta. <laughs> oh, it's called a symbol. <laughs> <laughs> so, big C up here, little c up here. Big C and little c are the hardest ones to distinguish because they look exactly... Um. The same, so um, be careful with your C's. Make capital C as big as possible, and little c as little as possible. Opposite of B is, of course, little b. Okay. okay. Now the way the law of science is going to work is we're going to drop an altitude from vertex C. And altitudes are where we get our right angle. Okay. We'll call that length H. Right. And what? For height. Right. Yeah, it'll work. For height. Smart. So if I look at angle A, vertex A, and I set up the sine of A, it would be the sine of vertex A is C equal to. SIN. Oh, this is the abbreviation for sine, but the proper way of spelling sine is SIN. So what's the proper way of spelling cosine? C O S? S I N. E. <sighs> Someplace back in your notes, I wrote it all out. So what is the sine of A equal to according to this picture? Uh, H over H -B. B. H over B. All right, and if we look at this vertex and do sine, we get the sine of B is equal to? H, H over A. Little a. So far, so good? Uh -huh. All right. Now, the dummy variable here is H. So I want to take both of these equations and solve it for h. Is something I introduced. So if I solve this for h, I get h is equal to b sine of a. And if I solve for h over here, I get h is equal to a sine of big B. <clears throat> and since both of them are equal to h, they must equal the same, each other. So we get b sine of big A is equal to a sine of big B. Big B. Big B. Now I'm going to draw some fractions on the board for Ryan. No. <laughs> no. If I have um, m over n is equal to p over q, what is that called? A proportion. And how do we solve proportions? You cross multiply. So when we cross multiply, you're going to get mq is equal to np. Do you agree with that? I guess. All right. So what I want to... You don't agree with that? Okay, Ryan guesses for everything. Oh, dear. Remember that. Math. So the product of two things equaling the product of another two things is also a proportion. It's just usually we're used to seeing it as fractions. So what I want to do is I want to write this back in its fractional form. So I basically want to undo it. So if it's mq, m goes on the top of one side, q goes at the bottom of the other side. So I put b at the top of this side is equal to sine of a over here. So when I cross multiply them, I get b sine a. Mm -hmm. okay. Same thing for n and p. I'm going to put the a at the top over here and put sine b over here. And this is the law of signs.
Okay, now when you said law of signs earlier, didn't you just wrote that instead of going through all that? Like this is the law of signs? Nope. So uh, you would just trust me? Nope. Well, if you're the teacher, yes. Please don't. I'd rather you not trust me. Ooh. Okay. And therefore I have to prove everything. Okay. Um, if this is the law of signs, then so is this. I don't trust you. What did I do? You just flipped them. I just took both fractions and flipped them. That's totally legal. That's totally legal. Just, just totally legal. In other words, instead of choosing B to be at the top over here, I could have chose sine of A to be at the top, and then B would be at the bottom. This one, you use if looking for a side, you use this setup. If you're looking for one of the sides, A, B, or C, little C, um, of this triangle, you use that setup. This one, if <coughs> you're looking for an angle, big A, big B, or big C. Now, there's an extension to this formula, and you could also write sine of C over little c is equal to all of that. We could change which way the altitude was drawn, and it works out exactly the same. Uh, but generally, I just use sine of A over B and sine of B over, I'm sorry, sine of A over little a, sine of B over little b, but sine of C over little c is also one of the proportions. That's just the main formula. It's not a very bad formula, right? Let's find out. Sure. Now, do you remember uh, geometry? Shapes. Proving triangles are congruent? Right? No. <laughs> I took geometry with you. I know. So you better know this. I took geometry back in high school. Prove no, our freshman year. Triangles. Shapes. Do you remember what that symbol means? Thank you, Ryan. Yes, hold on. Don't tell me. Don't no. say it. No one else is. What? Mm. Similar would be um, there's congruent. Squiggly. Is it congruent? Congruent. What's so, right? To prove triangles congruent, I guess. <laughs> there is side side side. If both if both triangles are congruent for each one of their corresponding sides, the two triangles are congruent. So if you have a three four five triangle and you have another triangle that's three four five, those two triangles have to be the identical same triangle. There is also side angle side. Sass. Sass. I remember this. There is angle side side uh, angle side angle. Yeah. yeah. And then there's also and S. side angle side and angle side angle are basically the same one, just kind of rewritten. Is there any others? S. Ass doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it spells ass. So don't use uh, this one. Most people in high school call it the SSA rather than the ASS for that reason. Um, this one does not. Not provable. <coughs> and that's the one that's going to cause us the most trouble. We can use law of signs on the SSA format, but sometimes you get one triangle, sometimes you get two triangles, and sometimes you don't get any triangles whatsoever. And it's really hard to describe uh, those three situations. So SSA and ASS we cannot oh, use. And angle, angle side is also another one yeah. that we can um, prove congruent triangles. So these four are the ways we can prove congruent triangles. This one gives us an inconclusive triangle, not a guaranteed one. These give me guaranteed triangles. They're there. They exist. So this one is, what's it called? I can't think of the word. This gives us an ambiguous situation. Ambiguous. I think I can spell it. I could care less. All right, for law of sines, we're going to need either angle, angle, side. If you look at the setup, you need an angle to the top, the angle to the top, and one of the sides. So this is a law of sines, angle, angle, side. But isn't the A as the same thing as the A as A? Mm -hmm. Order, when you're talking about a triangle and matching them up, you would be looking at angle, side, angle. That would be A, 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 S, A. If you're looking for angle, angle, side, it would be angle, angle, this side. 
So there's two different ways of looking at the triangle. So Here is the side that has to go in order. So yeah, they have to go in order. So the first one is the side is between the two angles. This one is the two angles and then the side. So yeah, they're different. Um, angle, angle, side. This is also a setup for law of sines. <laughs> for example, if I give you that A is equal to 12 centimeters, the measure of angle A is equal to 38 degrees, angle B is equal to 72 degrees, I want you to uh, solve the triangle. In other words, find all the angles, find all the sides. One second. I'm trying to copy all this stuff now. Find all the angles, find all the sides. <laughs> Okay. So the first thing you want to do is just draw a general triangle. So it can just be any kind of triangle. Yep, I don't even care if it matches the information. <clears throat> what you're interested in is not what the picture looks like, it's the location of the vertices compared to the sides. So we can draw a right triangle, couldn't we? You could. And just label it, oh, this side is going to be 72 degrees. Yeah, I don't care what you do to it. Okay. All right, and then this side is little a, and this side is little b, and this side is little c. Then put in your information. So here's vertex A. This angle is equal to? 38. 38 degrees. Put it right in your picture. Even if it doesn't match. I mean, it could look like this obtuse angle and you're putting 38 degrees. Yeah, because right now my 9 degree right triangle is now 38. Yeah, well, life goes on. Nice job. But it's not the measure that matters, it's the location. Okay. Um, side A is equal to? 12 centimeters. Angle B is equal to? Oh, wait, they got to be opposite. So, yeah, A and big, little a and big A have the opposite. I wrote mine that right next to each other. So, the first thing you can solve for is easy. If I'm solving this triangle, finding all the information about it, what's the first thing you would find? You know the other, um, the other um, degrees. The other degree up here for angle C. Yeah, 72 and 38. And 70 degrees for angle C. So, 72 plus 38 is 110. 10, so that leaves 70. me. 70. It's 70, 180, right. So this is 70 degrees. All right, that might help us later on, knowing that that's 70 it's degrees. To help us later on. It's going to help us. Now, we're trying to solve for a side. That's all that's left is B and C. C. Um, since we're solving for a side, pick one of them. B. B. If you're solving for B, you're going to set it up as B over sine of B. Big B. But big B is? 72. 72 degrees. Okay. And that's going to equal, pick the side you know. A. And A is? 12. Over sine of the angle opposite of it, which is? 38. 38 degrees. And the setup allows you to solve for B, and it gives you the exact answer. Well, when you type it in your calculator, you get an approximate answer. But it gives you what B is equal to without ambiguity, because this is angle, angle, side, side which is a provable right triangle, yeah. a provable triangle. So, yeah, you, so you put in the calculator 12 divided by sine of 38 degrees, and then times multiply it by sine of 72 mm -hmm. degrees. And so when you solve for B, you're going to get B equals 12 sine of 72 degrees divided by sine of 38. So the reason to have the B at the top is if you're solving for the side, that becomes the easiest way to solve for it. You're solving for an angle, you want the angle in the top. It makes it the easiest to solve for. What's this approximately? Make sure your calculator is in degrees if you have the big ugly one. And how do you change this again? 18. Make sure Yours is automatically four. in degrees. Really? Mm -hmm. right. Yep. I'm not sure if I trust you. Can you show me? Really? There's a button that says D E G. I'm looking for that. Top. You mean D R G? No. It says D R G. D R G? Yeah, not D E G. D R G. Yeah, this is why you need to prove stuff. So then you get degrees, radians, gradients. Oh, we don't use gradients. We use the you want degrees. It should be underlined. 18.5? So, so okay. 18 18 I didn't get that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, what? Supposedly 18.5. So this side is 18.5 centimeters. centimeters. All right, so then how do I find side C? Set it up again. And you go C over. Oh, can I use Pythagorean theorem? No. 
Why? Because it's not a right triangle. Because it's not a right triangle. Bottom line, it is. Oh, I don't care how your drawing is. It's not a right triangle. There's no 90 degrees there. So C over. Uh -huh. Sound of C. 70. And we needed that 70 degrees just to do this one. Equals. Choose the one you didn't find. In other words, don't use the 18.5. Use the we'll use 12. Use so it'll be 12 over sine of 38. So C is equal to 12 sine of 70 mm -hmm. over sine of 38. Mm -hmm. And then C is going to equal... I'm going to guess approximately somewhere around 14. Yeah. Somewhere about 16. Something wrong. Darn it. 17? No. No. What? 18.3. I knew it would be shorter than the other one mm -hmm. because opposite a smaller angle, you'll have a smaller side. Opposite a bigger angle, you'll have a bigger side. So 18.370. Not bad. Hmm. So we solve the triangle. Case one is always the easiest yes, one. Exactly. That, that seems like really easy to do. It is easy. Don't make it hard. I tell you, the only one that's hard is the ambiguous case. Don't make it hard. Good. I'm getting to the ambiguous case. You don't have time. Yeah. No time. No time. There's no time. <laughs> no, we have time. There's no time. Be a cop. You, 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 you had a laptop with no time. Class, run away. He called it tater. Just because it's screen break time. <laughs> Case two. You only met the uh, lines over. Oh, I highly suggest you write next to the this one that this was angle angle side. Why? The setup is angle angle side. Why? Because we were given this angle. We're given two this angle side. and this side. So in order, it goes angle angle side. I did. No, you didn't. Ah. You know because he said it. No. So, if I give you B is forty inches. Angle A is 77 degrees, and angle C is equal to 101 degrees. And I draw my picture. It's just some random triangle. Pigeon. I'm going to draw it a little weird this time. Draw pizza. Draw pizza by. That's definitely not a right triangle. Out of this picture, which one would you label C? The biggest, the big the one. biggest one. So here's C, the here's A, here's B. Oh so this is little c, this is little b, this is little a. So be able to adjust your picture if you want to match the information, yeah, but not necessary. not necessary. So c is 101. Dalmatians. 101 dalmatians. <laughs> yes. Uh, b is 40 inches, that's over here. And a is 77 degrees, so this up here is 77 degrees. So what setup is this one? Out of the so the, uh, uh, angle B is going to be two degrees, by the way. Angle, side, angle. So this is the angle, side, angle setup. Angle B is equal to what? Two degrees. Two degrees? Yes. 101 plus 77 is 178. So this is two degrees. Mm -hmm. Tiny angle down there. Two degrees. All right, so what side do you want to find? Let's go ahead and find... Oh, by the way... This one and that one are now exactly the same. We have the same information. All three angles and one side. Wait, what? So this one, after we found the third angle, this is all three angles uh -huh. and given one side. Yep. And we found the other two sides. So once we get to this point of finding that third angle, they're the exact same problem. Even though that's angle, angle, side, and this is angle, side, angle, they're technically the same. So we solve it the exact same way. Yep. So what do you want to find first? I guess we go ahead and solve A. All right, so we have A down here. So A over sine, sine of 77. 77 degrees is equal to, let's go with B, which is 40. 40. That's the only one you could go with. Over two sine, degrees. Of, sine <laughs> of 2 degrees. Sine of 2 degrees, which is really, really close to 0. So if that's really, really close to 0, something divided by something really, really close to 0 goes which way, big or small? Mm, not zero. I said close to zero. If you take something and divide by 0 0.00001, does it make the number bigger or smaller? Bigger. Bigger. So I'm expecting this to be. Yeah, bigger. it's uh, 1116.8. 1116. 1116.8 1116. 
inches. Yeah. Wow. Made his problem with me. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so now we're going to solve for C, right? So to solve for C, you're going to go C over sine of 101, sine of 101. It's equal to, we got to do B again, so 40. 40 over sine of 2 degrees. Sine of 2 degrees. Which also makes it really, it's going to be a really big number. So C, oh, I should say approximately. It's not exact. Approximately. Approximately. <laughs> So you're going to get 40 times sine of 101 divided by sine of 2. Got you. 1,100. 1,100. 0.1. 0.1? And this would be, no, it's not inches. Is it inches? It is inches. Yeah. inches. I thought I changed it to feet for some reason. So this side is 1116.8 inches. This side is 1125.1 inches. That's too big for me. Uh, how do I change it to feet? Uh, Divide by 12. I'm just curious how big this is. I know what 40 inches is. 40 inches is about this big. So what's 1,116 divided by 3? 93. Not 12, 12. So this is 93 feet. And this one is about 90 something feet. 40 inches. So 40 inches on one side, this big, and then 90 feet that way, and 90 some feet that way. No, no, the, the bottom one is 93. That's 93 feet. That one is 93.7 feet. So this is 93 feet, 93.7 feet. Yeah, well, no. technically. So basically, you have these two things shooting out really long, and you've got this little side over here, 40 inches. That's, cool that's, that's a about. really, really weird triangle. Yeah, it's very strange. But this isn't that hard. No. Nope. Go. Until we get to case three. You see, I might actually get a good grade on this test. Yeah. Oh, no, this is the simple part. The hard part okay, is vectors. Well, I might get a good grade on the simple part of this test. Vectors. <laughs> vectors. No. No time. We have time. No time. I have three Parlay. minutes. At least I want to describe one thing. Parlay. This one. Why is this one ambiguous? So if I give you a side that goes on forever, I am not talking about one of the sides of the triangle so far. This is the third side. These are the other two sides. The way I'm going to set it up is actually angle side side. S. S. And you don't want to use S because it spells something bad. So I'm going to throw an angle in here. So this is one of your sides, and this is the first angle. The last side determines what kind of triangle you get. So if... I probably drew this badly. If my third side is this long, oh, it can dangle up there, but it's never ever going to hit that bottom one, right? Yeah. As you swing it back and forth, it's never going to come down here to the bottom. So how many triangles are you going to get? None. None. So this would be no triangles. And that's why it doesn't prove triangles, because you have that possibility that it's not even a triangle. Because you don't know what that side is. You don't know what that side is. All right, um, so let's say I have a side. I'm going to make the angle a little bit um, crazier. Just go the other way. This way. Here's my angle. This side goes on forever in that direction. And I'm going to make my side this long. And if I swing it, how many times is it going to hit that line? Just one. Just once. So how many triangles am I going to get out of that mess? Just one. Just one. So this would give me one triangle. That's the one we want. It gives us exactly one triangle. It's really nice and simple. Then there's the possibility. So the reason why SSA doesn't work because there's different possibilities of what it could be. See, all the rest are one triangle. Guaranteed, no doubt about it. Okay. This one is going to cause us trouble because it could be none. It could be one. Or it could two. be... Here's this angle here. What if the side is that long? It will touch it. If I rotate it, how many times is it going to touch it? Like two times. Two times. One's here, and one's here. So it actually has two triangles associated with it. This one here, and you'll notice that this angle is obtuse, the angle of intersection there. And this tri triangle here, and you'll notice that this angle is acute. So when we swing this one, it's going to give us an obtuse triangle, this one here, 
or the bigger acute triangle. So this one gives us two triangles. So it really depends on that third side, how long it is, and it also depends on the angle that you're given. If you have this obtuse angle to begin with, you're pretty much guaranteed one triangle. Um, if your side is too short and it's never going to touch the other side, you get nothing. And if you just get the right length of side, it swings around and actually hits that base twice, so it gives you two triangles. You think of it as a pendulum as it swings through. That's the one we're going to concentrate on Wednesday of next week. So, so study for the test. Next, so next Wednesday, right? Next Wednesday. By the way, you just, we do, we could Today's Wednesday. Oh. Wednesday week. Wednesday week would be the week after Wednesday, right? <laughs> John? And we've talked about why it becomes ambiguous, but now let's look at how the math determines it. <coughs> SSA. When you're given side side and then an angle. All right, so for example, box it away. Um, find the measure of angle C, um, the measure of angle A and the last side given that C, little c, is equal to 6.2 centimeters, little b is equal to 5 centimeters, and the measure of angle B is equal to 43 degrees. Step number one, draw a picture. Oh, you've been doing that for like three chapters now. Um, so if I draw this picture, I'm just going to draw some kind of scalene triangle, label the sides ABC, or the vertex is ABC. And then, you know, opposite big A is little a, and I don't know what it is. Opposite big B is little b, so this is 5 centimeters. And opposite C is little c, so this is 6.2 centimeters. So far, so good. And the angle B is this angle over here, and it's 43 degrees. Try to label your angles on the inside. One of the problems I've had with this is people put the angle on the outside, and then they mistake it for a side, and oh, all things go crazy. All right, so if I'm going to use law of sines, what am I looking for first? What do you think I can find first, given this information? You can find angle C. Angle C. So if I set it up as sine of C over 6.2, I'll write that down. Sine of big C over 6.2, the side opposite it, is equal to sine of B. Sine of B, which is sine of 43 degrees over, oops, over uh, 5. All right. Then what? <coughs> You could cross multiply, but that gets in the way. You really only need to move one number. What number do you have to move? The 6.2. The 6.2. So just multiply both sides by 6.2, and you get sine of C is equal to 6.2 sine of 43 degrees, all divided by 5. Mm -hmm. oh, I, guess <laughs> I swear. What'd you say? 0.81. 0.81? 84. 84. Go one more decimal place. Uh, 84. Uh, 84. Uh, 0.846. So you get sine of C is equal to 0.846. Great! Except for one problem. That's the sine of C. That's the sine of C. What do I really want? C. How do I find C? You, um, so you can do it in the calculator. You can do it in the calculator. Yeah. How do you get rid of sine? Ln. Ln. Ln gets rid of e. E gets rid of ln. What's the inverse of sine? Plus sine. Oh. Ain't all CK. Oh, that's Those reciprocal. Sine to the negative one. Sine to that little negative one, but it's not to the negative one. It's just sine. It's red sine inverse. All right. So you take that thing. 
Bring it up here, and you do sine of C is equal to 0 0.846. If you want to be really accurate, go four decimal places. Or just leave it alone and type it all in the calculator. So you're going to get C is equal to sine inverse of 0.846, which gives you what? 58. 58 degrees. The nearest tenth. I like tenths. Really? Well, it comes down to even? 57.8. 57. <coughs> Go roundy crazy. <laughs> Round it to the nearest degree. If you want, yeah, 58 will be fine. I, I like my years tense. All right, there's a problem with us. Well, we'll get to it in a second. There's a possible problem with this. Um, just for reference sake, pure sine inverse type thing, where does the sine inverse work? The first and fourth. The first and fourth, right? <laughs> But if you're doing a pure equation like sine of c equals 0.846, how many answers should it have? Two. Two. Because sine is positive in the first quadrant, but where else is it positive? In the second. In the second. So this could be an acute angle, you know, from here to here, or it could be an obtuse angle here to here. So this is the danger of law of sines. There's two possible places for this angle to be. It could be in the first quadrant, acute. Or it could be in the second quadrant of twos. So um, this is possible. What's the other possible angle? How would I find it? Yeah, 90. Mm, not at 90. Um. They're not complementary. Double it? Ah, oh, come on. If this angle, let me use color here for a second. Like if this point. angle is 57.8 degrees, What's the measure of this angle <coughs> in the second quadrant? How would I find it? <coughs> you would take uh, 180 subtract that. 180 subtract it. So this would be 180 degrees. Take away the reference angle of 57.8 degrees for a grand total of 122.2. 122.2. This is where law of sines becomes ambiguous. I'm not sure if it's an acute angle, I'm not sure if it's an obtuse angle, I'm not sure if it's both, if it's possible that it's both of them, or, or the other possibility is neither of them. Um, so these are the two possibilities. So how do I know which one works and which one doesn't, or if both work, you or if neither of them work? You have to find the other angle first. I have to find the other angle first? Not necessarily. Hmm. Think of it this way. If this angle is 43 degrees, can this one be 122.2 degrees? No. Yeah. Why? Uh, because we already have 43 degrees. That would make the triangle. 122 degrees. .2. If I add those two <coughs> together, what do you get? 165.2. Oh. Actually, that's not that bad. What's the biggest angle at? How should I say this? What is the largest possible sum of two angles in a triangle? The largest of two? Of two angles. What is the absolute largest? 179. 179.99999999. Eventually stop. But really, really close to 180, right? Because the sum of all three angles has to be 180. So as long as the sum of these two is less than 180, we have two triangles going on here. So because of this fact here is less than 180 degrees, all this information tells me we have two triangles. Kind of crazy now. But you only drew one. I only drew one as a reference, but there's literally two. I'll draw two in the end, or try to. All right, so C is 57 degrees is one case, or uh, one triangle. <coughs> so one of your triangles the measure of angle C is going to be 57.8 degrees. That forces the measure of angle A to be what? How would I find measure of angle A? Just write It's going to be 79.2. You take 
You add it to the 43 that's already there, and then what you and then subtract it from 18, 79.2, 79.2. Now I can ask the really crazy question. I need to find side A. And side A is based on angle A. So if angle A is small, side A is going to be small. If angle A is big, side A is going to be big. So under this triangle, we have to do sine, oh no. We're looking for a side. So little a over sine of a, which is 79.2, is equal to, what's the side we're given that we can use? B. I would do the side B and angle B because they're the two solid numbers. So B is 5 and sine of, was it 43? Okay. How do I solve for A? Should have called that triangle one instead of one triangle. You, you solve for A, you solve triangle. Solve for A, so you're going to get A is equal to uh, 5 times the sine of 79.2 degrees divided by sine of 43 degrees. 7.2. 7 mm -hmm. So A is approximately 7.2 bananas. Awesome. And then you should be like, no, they're something else. Degrees? Radians? Radians? Centimeters. Centimeters. No, bananas. Milligrams. <laughs> they're bananas. <clears throat> All right, so one of the triangles is going to have a C angle of 57.8, an A angle of 79.2, an A side of 7.2, and that solves the entire triangle. Okay? The other possibility, triangle number two, yeah, I wrote it in words over there, so triangle two, the other possibility is this 122.2 degrees. So we set up the exact same. So the measure of angle A is 14.8 degrees. That makes more sense. So 14.8 degrees goes down here. 5 over <coughs> sine of 43 degrees goes here. How did I know I had a problem? Well, if A, I'm sorry, if A is the largest side possible, because it has the largest angle, it can't be the same side as C. It doesn't make any sense. So I knew something was going on over there. I got A to equal 1.9. Yeah. Angle A? No, uh, little a itself. The side A. So when you go 5 times sine of 14.8 divided by? Sine of 43, I got 1.8. That makes more sense. So approximately? 1.9. 1.9 centimeters. That makes a lot more sense. All right. See if I can draw a picture of these two. This one is all acute angles. It actually fits this picture rather well. So side A was 7.2. Side, where's B? Side B, B is, five. is 5. It's down here now. And that kind of makes sense. They're all about the same size. So it makes it an acute triangle. This one, the triangles has an obtuse angle. like that, um, this is A, this is B, this is C. In this picture, C is 122 degrees, so that would be the obtuse angle. Opposite of C is 6.2. Um, angle B 43. is 43 degrees, so that would go here. And opposite him was 5. And that kind of makes sense, that the bigger angle, 122, is bigger than the side 5. And then A, being the tiniest angle, has the tiniest side, which is 1.9 centimeters. That actually makes sense. So this is just saying that we possibly have two, but we don't know which one we have. It's either the acute triangle or it's the obtuse triangle. Now, usually if you have an application of law of signs, you pretty much know you either have an acute or you have an obtuse. So you just choose the one that you know you should be taking. Which, which one? In this case, it's, for our answer, it's both. But if it was a physical answer, and I knew that my triangle was an acute 
triangle, I'd pick the first answer. If I knew my triangle was supposed to be obtuse, I'd take the second one. So it's not you're going to get an answer and, oh, you're done. You have to kind of test it out. So all SSA gives us is just possible triangles. It could do two possible triangles. It could guarantee one triangle or no triangles whatsoever. You'd have that swinging side, not touching anybody. All right. So let's do the other possible things with this. How about this one? Uh, for example, uh, find the measure of angle A, question mark, when you have A is equal to 7 centimeters, B is equal to 9.8 centimeters, and angle B, the measure of it, is equal to 72 degrees. Draw a little triangle, A, B, C, and plug your information in what you can. So let's see, little a is 7 centimeters, so that's this side. Little b is 9.8 centimeters, it's opposite of big B. So we don't know what little c is. And angle B over here is 72 degrees. Now, do you see that this is side side angle? You're given 9.8 as a side, 7 is a side, and then the next number you come up to as you rotate around it is an angle. So it's side side angle. Well, what did you rotate it around the other way? Uh, then we go with angle side side, which is the one you don't want to say is it going to give you ambiguous answers. We're adults. We can say ass. Yeah, it's ass. <laughs> ass not anything. All right, so what angle do you want to find? Because that's the only thing you're going to find out of this mess. A. Find measure of angle A. So sine of A over little a, which is 7, is equal to... Now remember, big letters on the top when you're solving for angles, little letters at the top when you're solving for <coughs> sides. It makes your life a lot easier. Um, sine of what? 72. 72 degrees over 9.8. And then solve for sine of A. So eventually you're going to get sine inverse of what? Not decimal, I mean symbols first. Do you want us to go out three decimals? Plus three decimals. decimals. It would be sine inverse of 7 times sine of 72 degrees all over 9.8. You can type it in your calculator that way, and it'll just spit out the answer. Uh, 42.8. So 42.8 degrees is one of the possible measures for A. So when you come up to this one, assume it has two triangles until you can prove otherwise. Okay. So triangle number one, measure of angle A is equal to 42.8 degrees. Measure of angle B is already given, so measure of angle C equals what then? Is that a uh, nice triangle? Yeah, sure. What about triangle number two? We can finish off finding the sides for that one in a second. What's the other possible measure angle for A? Remember, this is law of sine, so it's either in the first quadrant or it's in the second quadrant. So what is the second quadrant angle of A? How do you find it? Take one of your names and track that one. I'm going to go 180 minus 42.8 for a grand total of 137.2. So 
So if it's 137.2, what's the measure of angle C going to be? Well, it's going to be 180 minus 137.2 plus uh, the original angle of 72 degrees, which gives you? Uh, 209.2. Wait, no, because uh, 137.2 plus 72 degrees is more than 180. So you're going to end up with? A negative number. Negative number. Therefore? It's not real. It's not real. So this is not a triangle. Not a triangle here. So it only has one triangle associated with it. All right, so go back to our one triangle here. What side can I find? Well, there's only one side to find. C. C. So you go C over the sine of C. Well, the measure of angle C is 65.2 degrees is equal to, just go with the B1. You have to go with the B. I, would, I highly suggest you go with the B1. 9.8 over sine of 72 degrees. So side C is approximately? There, it's like $15 at the bookstore. I'll have 9.35. 9.35. Or 9.4. Mm -hmm. So it only has the acute triangle. There is no obtuse triangle. Not bad, right? So there's one more. Is she falling asleep back there? <whistles> oh, it's falling. <laughs> might, as well, then. might as well, then. Very small one. Last example. And then we'll move on to the next one. Thank you. What, you don't like law of signs? No. So nice and easy, though. Here's the easiest example. Um, find side C and measure of angle A. Given that A is equal to 14 centimeters, John, are you going to come late and talk to my class? And the measure of angle B is equal to 68 degrees. I just associate the, when you're trying to do that, it's like the... Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, we're talking about Doctor Who, the Dalek. Okay, draw a picture. Here's A, here's B, here's C. Uh, little A is 14. Why little B is... Why are we always given side B and angle B? Eh, I've just made it up. my examples that way. It doesn't matter as long as they have that side-side angle association. And angle B is 68 degrees in this case. Okay. So what angle do you want to find first? A. A. You really can't go for C. So angle A. Oh, what am I doing? I'm looking for angle A. So I go sine of A over 14, 14 is equal to sine of, 68. sine of 68 degrees over 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. All right, solve for A. Mm -hmm. One, one, one. So A is going to equal sine inverse of 14 times sine of 68 degrees, all divided by 10. 1.5. Nope. 5. No. You should get an A. Wait, no. <laughs> Denied. Denied. Yeah, I like that. Denied. The I answer is not. You got a domain error. Yeah. You can't do it, can you? No, you can't. Why? I don't think oh, it's in. Yeah, you get an error. You get uh, a domain error. Why? Um, because reason. Just because the calculator says we do. What's the biggest number that sine inverse can handle? Negative one. Negative one all the way up to? One. Positive one. Take a guess what 14 sine of 68 over 10 is equal to. More than one. More than one, or less than negative one. Oh, that's right, because I got, uh, when I did that, I thought we get 1.3. So this turns into 1.3? Yeah. 
So if it's 1.3, that's definitely bigger than anything that sine inverse can take. So your calculator is going to spit out an error. An error. So how many triangles do I have? None. None. This is the no triangle case. So in other words, you have a side, you have a side, and the last side is swinging in the air, and it just goes the third side. So it's kind of a cool triangle. So I showed you the case for two, the case for one, and the case for none. Zero. The one that's the hardest? Zero. Two. two. Zero. Zero is the easiest. Yeah. A lot of people, when they get that domain error, they're like, oh, I must have done something wrong, and they start all over.